You know, when you're learning to ride a motorcycle, how do you know when it's the right time to move from the parking lot out to the street? Let's talk about it this week on MC Rider. So for this video, we're going to take the following statements for granted. You're a new rider, you have a motorcycle, you have your protective gear, your helmet, boots, jacket, gloves. You've taken a training course, you've practiced at least some on a parking lot or using the field guide, which is an excellent resource for doing this. And you're wondering if it's the right time to start riding out on the street. So how do you know when you're ready? Well, this is a question I get frequently on the forums and in the comments on YouTube. In fact, there are quite a few discussions on the forums on this very topic. In fact, here's one right here where you can see us talking about it on the forums. Ryder was wanting to know about the proper time to get out on the street. This particular rider had ridden for 300 miles already on a parking lot practicing and was thinking about hitting the road. This may seem like a whole lot of miles, but every rider is different. Every rider learns at a different pace. You know, some riders that I've seen come in and take a safety course and they progress very quickly. I've also seen riders who need to take a second or third attempt at a training course before they're ready to get their license. Before we continue with this video, I wanted to talk to you about the hats that I introduced a few weeks ago. And we sold out of those really quick. I've got some more in stock but I need to be able to ship them today if they're going to get to you before Christmas. I'm going to be out of town for a, you know, a little while, spending time with my family over the holidays. So I want to get these out today if I can. If not, I'll just take the ones you know, that I don't sell offline and will continue sales whenever I get back in town. I just don't want to collect money on it and then not be able to ship for a, you know, a few weeks while I'm enjoying the holiday with my families. But I've got you know, these gray and black style with different style of patches on it. This one's got a red patch. I've got the black and gray hat, so it's got a black front, the gray mesh in the back. This is an antique patch. And this one is all black, so it's got black mesh in the back, black in the front. This has an antique patch on this as well. So just go on the website, mcrider.com slash hat. You can see the different styles that I've got on there. If you order the hat and a keychain, so I've got keychains both in red and black this time. These biker style were real popular last time. I'll get these shipped out to you by the end of day, hopefully, if not first thing in the morning before I leave town. That way you can have it before the holidays. And if not, we'll just take them offline and we'll sell them whenever I get back in town. But I wanted to give you a heads up on that. If you've been wanting to get one of these, now's the time to do it and I can get them out to you hopefully this afternoon. But there are some basic things that a rider should be able to do at a minimum before they're ready to get out on the streets. They should know the location and controls of the motorcycle and be able to manipulate them without looking down to do so. So that's one of the first things you work on with a new rider. They immediately start looking down at the controls. You tell them to turn on the blinker, their eyes immediately go down. You work, where's the engine cutoff switch? immediately their eyes go down. Obviously the things like the clutch and throttle, the front and rear brakes, and other secondary controls like the blinkers, the high and low beam, and the engine cutoff switch. Basically any of the controls that you need out on the street should be second nature. You should know how to operate them, where they're located, how to use them without having to look down to manipulate them on your motorcycle. The good thing is about this one, you can practice this one in your garage, you can get the owner's manual in hand if you need to, to help you learn the location of the controls on your particular motorcycle. Another crucial skill is being able to start and stop the motorcycle with control. Now with control is the key phrase here. If you frequently stall the motorcycle when you're starting out or you frequently stop and you're out of balance and feels like the motorcycle is wanting to fall over to one side or the other, you probably need some more practice time. And the parking lot's the perfect place to practice this, not out on the streets where the same mistake could be life-threatening. Another technique that you want to develop is cornering with precision is another skill that riders need to practice. Many single vehicle motorcycle crashes occur because the rider was unable to na navigate a corner with precision. So what do I mean by with precision? You get a new rider out on a parking lot and many of them can make wide sweeping turns on an empty parking lot, no problem. You put two lines down on that same parking lot and you say make that corner staying within those two lines and a whole lot of riders struggle because they have 
haven't learned to control or make those curves with precision yet. On the street, you don't get to drift wide as you're going around the corner and run off the side of the road, potentially. You don't get to make a turn and drift across the center line into oncoming traffic. There, the penalty can be costly, so with precision becomes a big deal on the street, and the parking lot is where you learn it. You know, riders develop precision in cornering when they better understand counter steering and are able to put that into practice. Another huge factor in cornering with precision is looking through the corner, turning those head and eyes, pointing your nose in the direction that you want the motorcycle to go. You hear rider coaches talk about that all the time. It's not just something we gripe about. When you get out on the street, you want to have that technique down because it's going to help you navigate corners with more precision. Techniques like this are new to riders and they need to focus on using the proper technique when they're developing that skill. Another great exercise to practice on a parking lot that will pay big dividends on the street is making U-turns. I know I hear a lot of you say it right now, I've never had to make a U-turn out on the street in order to avoid having a crash. What's the big deal with U-turns? Well, it's more what you learn by being able to do U-turns effectively on a parking lot than it is making the U-turn itself. Because in order to be efficient with U-turns, you need to have good clutch and throttle control. You need to be able to have you know, good technique at turning your head and eyes and using head and eye control. You need to be able to know which brake to use and how to use it. All of this helps you develop slow speed skills and all of that helps you keep from dropping your motorcycle out on the street or in a worst case scenario, dropping it in traffic with traffic all around you can you know, be costly and potentially dangerous. So all of the techniques will turn into skills that are vital out on the street. And while you practice making new turns may not be life-saving on a parking lot, the skills that you learn while practicing perfecting U-turns can be life-saving once you get out on the street. In fact, I would say that if you can't make a U-turn within the width of maybe two and a half or we'll say three parking spaces on an empty parking lot, your riding technique is deficient somewhere. And if you're deficient in that particular technique, it may well cost you out on the street and cause you a crash or worse, cause some injuries. So I agree, U-turns on the street are rarely life-saving, but what you learn from using the proper technique while doing U-turns can be life-saving. So basically all the skills that a rider learns in the MSF class, a rider needs a level of proficiency at before riding on the straight in traffic, in my opinion. Now some riders are able to develop and demonstrate these skills the first time through at an MSF class, but I've seen a lot of riders who need more time so what changes when you move from the parking lot to the street? So why is it such a big deal when you're out in traffic? Because in a parking lot, if you fall over, you're not in traffic. On a parking lot, if you run wide in a corner, you usually have got more parking lot to complete the corner. On a parking lot, if you stall your motorcycle, there's no one behind you who didn't realize you stalled your bike and is coming up on the rear end of your motorcycle. When you get out on the street, it not only involves what you can do on your motorcycle, but you're also affected what everyone else does in their car driving down the road. So the game changes on the street. You know, on the parking lot, you learn road skills. In the street, you use those skills, but you also use good road strategy. Things like following distance, looking far enough up the road, predicting what traffic is going to do around you, staying out of road traps, and a whole host of other good road strategy techniques. If you're focused totally on motorcycle control, it's hard to focus on road strategy. So the good place to develop the road control, the road skills, is on a parking lot, not on the street. The good news is that you can learn a lot of the road strategy stuff by practicing in your car. They're just as important to driving a car well, but the potential consequences of not using them are greater on a motorcycle. So learning to ride a motorcycle is much like washing your hair Leather, rinse, repeat. A good rider and a lifelong learner will return to the parking lot and refine their skills. They'll increase the level of difficulty of the skills that they practice and they'll refine their technique in order to be safer out on the road. I still do this. 
So you may be asking, do I have to do all of this in order to ride a motorcycle on the street? And the honest answer is no. You can get your license, you can get a motorcycle, and just worry about getting seat time to increase your skills. But do know this, riding is riding and training is training. And while they do have some things in common, they are far from being the same thing. So here's one example. I can count on one hand the number of times that I've had to use emergency braking out on the street. It just hasn't been something that I needed a lot of times. A major part of that is due to using good road strategy on the streets, but reality, I haven't had to use emergency braking very often. So let's say for the sake of argument that I've used emergency braking, we'll say four times out on the street in all of my years of riding. So if I'd only used emergency braking four times, how well do you think I would be at doing it over hundreds of thousands of miles of riding in all the years I've been riding? Well, short answer is not very good, but I can go out to a parking lot and I can practice emergency braking and within 10 minutes, I've used that skill more than I would in hundreds of years of riding out on the street. So on the parking lots where you develop the skills, you use your road strategy out on the street so you don't need your skills, hopefully. But if you do, you've been out on a parking lot and you've got them as a tool in your belt to use it any time you need them. So just getting seat time out on the road is not the same thing as training. And any writer who tells you it is, the same thing is short-sighted. So develop your skill on a parking lot, focus on proper technique, and focus on the skills mentioned here and what you learned in the new writer class. Once you can perform the skills with consistency, start out with some roads that you know really well. You know, maybe the roads around your neighborhood, and then slowly build up to tougher roads with more challenge and traffic. You know, I live in Dallas, Fort Worth area. We have some of the heaviest traffic and some of the most challenging roads probably in the country, at least in the top 10 to ride around here. And I wouldn't want any brand new rider hopping out on some of the roads that we've got in Dallas, Fort Worth, while they're still focused on braking and cornering, starting and stopping a motorcycle. It's just not the right place to be. And it's just not a smart thing to do. The smart thing to do is develop those skills at a parking lot. Remember, a good rider returns to the parking lot and they're gonna seek additional training as well in order to grow and refine their skills. Lather, rinse, repeat, it's good advice. So I'll be out for a bit enjoying some time over the holidays with my family. I hope you have a blessed Christmas and a happy new year. And until next time, guys, this is Kev with MC Rider and I'll see you on the road.